So today we're joined by Rashid, who has managed to turn nighttime into daytime with a very impressive model he converted from TensorFlow Python to run in TensorFlow JS. Now, Rashid, first of all, tell us more about your background. Hi, sure. So, uh, hi, I'm Rashid, and I'm a high school student from India. Uh, I have been working in uh, working with machine learning and TensorFlow for almost the past one and a half year or so. And I've all I've loved to do uh, community uh, stuff uh, in past one and a half year. Uh, so maybe building projects uh, which uh, which which can be used by the community or sharing my knowledge about machine learning with the community. Great. So maybe you can tell us more about what you've made. Sure. Uh, so I've uh, so as you were saying, I've converted the MIRnet model from TF Python to TFJS. So it's available on the web, ready to use. And uh, what the MIRnet model essentially focuses on is converting high quality image content from its degraded version. So mm -hmm. you can understand it as a kind of image restoration. I see. And uh, specifically what we are focusing on over here is converting nighttime images to, uh, to as if they were taken in daytime uh, with this model. Wow. And it's with the AFJS, so all on the web. Excellent. That sounds very exciting. Maybe you can show us a live demo and we can see it in action. Sure. So I have this uh, screen cost uh, uh -huh. of me trying to uh, work my way around the uh, work my way around the example. So here yeah. you can see I have a rather dark image, which mm -hmm. I took from my phone camera on some trip, and I'll pass it in. Uh, I'll pass it to the model. So here you can see a minimalistic implementation of, um, of the MIRnet model on the web. And mm -hmm. you can also try it out for yourself um, on this website. So this is a website you've created and it's, got a, it's running on Node.js on the back end with TensorFlow.js. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. So I've passed mm -hmm. it in the image and I should be waiting for a couple of seconds for my mm -hmm. model to run. Uh, and after which I should be getting out uh, the image as if it, uh, what it would look like as if uh, taken in light. Sure. And you can upload any image you like, I guess. It could be any size and uh, pretty much any type and it will process that nicely. Very good. Looks like we've got some results. Let's see that. Awesome. So yeah, we can see a lot of detail in that image compared to the first one that we uploaded. You can see all the... Uh, the surroundings and all this, which is really, really interesting to see, actually. That, that's super cool. It's like a, having a superpower <laughs> in the browser to enhance your vision, which is very, very interesting. But maybe we can see some other examples of this in action as well, just to see how it, how it fares with other images. Sure. So here are a couple of more images uh, from, uh, from the model, passed into the model and their outputs. <laughs> you can see SpongeBob there, and uh, it's impressive. We couldn't even see anything before. Um, so that's a real big improvement versus the image prior to that. And let's see how this one does. I can't even tell what this is myself. And, ah, oh, it's a tent in the desert or something. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a real huge difference uh, before and after. Amazing. Cool. So those are really awesome demos. And um, can maybe can you explain a bit more about the architecture of this model and how it might compare to other existing uh, models out there? Sure. Uh, so the architecture we use in this, uh, is, the model we use in this is called the MIRnet model. Um, and if in case you want to explore more about the model in detail, I'll not go into details over here, but in case you want to explore more about the model and how it is being built uh, from scratch, you could take a look at the research paper from which uh, this is implemented. Mm -hmm. So uh, majorly what uh, this model allows you to do in comparison to the existing CNN based methods, uh, which allow you to do image super resolution is uh, usually the CNN based methods uh, operate either on full resolution or on progressively low, low resolution uh, representations. Mm -hmm. So you, so with the CNN method, you get an image, which is, uh, well, it's partially precise, but uh, but contextually less robust. So what this uh, architecture allows you to do is it allows you to create semantically reliable and uh, 
contextually robust uh, images as outputs, which is why you see such a, a great difference between uh, the two of those images and uh, specificity to the detail. So it actually preserves the structure better than others that are trying to, I guess, just enhance the colors and things. It tries to understand the content of the image to produce better results at the end somehow. Yeah, um, okay. yeah, that's right. It also introduces a couple of uh, uh, more uh, units in the architecture, which you could uh, take a look at uh, in the repository or uh, in the research paper too. Sounds good. Perfect. And was it particularly hard to convert the Python model to work in TensorFlow.js within Node? No, it it uh, it was indeed uh, I I'd, I'd say a bit easy to convert a Python model uh, to Node.js representation. Uh, mm -hmm. All you need to all I needed to spend more time on was for the custom layers. So layers, uh, uh, Lambda layers in the uh, in TensorFlow Python code. I need to spend some amount of time uh, converting them to TFJS. But other than that, it was indeed pretty easy to convert a TF Python model to TFJS uh, model. Awesome. And you also have awesome. wonderful docs for it. Totally. And we'll put those links in the uh, description of the video for anyone else interested. There's some cool tutorials out there which show you how to convert Python models as well. Now, clearly, performance is top of mind here, and on Node.js, the performance should be the same as TensorFlow Python, as they share the same C++ backend, which I believe is taking around 30 seconds for a large image to be processed right now. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Awesome. And uh, do you have any ideas or plans on how to make this maybe run faster in the future? Yeah. So as you mentioned, uh, performance is a heavy tool for this application. Uh, and is it is uh, majorly something we want to care about in this application, since most of the applications uh, which image restoration enjoys or applications are our TFGS models like these enjoy are maybe surveillance, medical imaging, or remote sensing. Just the three I can uh, think of at off the top of my mind, and yeah, most of sure. these would uh, want you to have um, have real time inferences. So uh, as of now, uh, the model isn't able to do real-time inferences, takes pretty long, uh, takes a huge toll on the performance. Uh, but I have a couple of plans uh, for it. So as, uh, as Jason and I were discussing a couple of days ago, uh, we were talking about shorting an image or multiple pixels of the image, uh, working, uh, making the model perform inference on each of those pixels of the image parallelizing all of those inference processes, and then somehow trying to reconstruct the image from all of these inferences. So that is what I'm working on now to improve the performance. I believe it should improve the performance by quite a lot. Yeah, I look forward to seeing version two and um, you know to see how well that works. And I think, yeah, breaking the image up, especially if it's a large image to begin with, might help in the processing there. Or maybe even using just smaller images to begin with might help or um, changing the architecture. In fact, if anyone's watching right now and is uh, particularly familiar with an architecture like this and may know how to optimize uh, the ops in that, then please reach out and I'm sure you can all nerd out after the show and uh, make it work even faster. I mean, something like this working in real time would be super interesting um, for a real time webcam, lighting uh, correction and all this kind of stuff for many, many different applications. Uh, now, if people want to try this out for themselves, is there a website or GitHub repo they can go to? Yeah, so remember the screencast we saw a couple of minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So that's a website available for you to try out. Just upload an image, wait for a couple of seconds. Might take a bit longer if a lot of people are trying it out at the same time. Uh, and get your output image right over there. But if you want to explore more about uh, more about this project, go into the specifics of it, uh, the easiest way to do so is to go on the GitHub repo. And the website code is right over there. Uh, just clone the GitHub repo, run some npm install, npm start and you are off and running with the website built on your local machine. Or just copy paste the commands from the docs. Excellent. Yeah, we'll put the links in the description after the show for everyone to find out. So I've got to ask, do you have any other models you try to convert from Python to TensorFlow.js or anything else you're looking into right now? Yeah, there's actually one. 
uh, I'm working on converting a model uh, which allows me to de-blur images or as you can understand, remove blurs from images. And I'm working on converting it from TF Python to TFJS so you can run it on the web available for everyone. Awesome. I look forward to seeing that one in, in uh, your next uh, show and tell. <laughs> and uh, yeah, once again, thank you very much for being on the show today. It's been super awesome to see how you've made superpowers in the browser become available to everyone. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Same you. Thank you. <laughs>